Big round of applause for Jess from Feature. Thanks everyone, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, technical difficulties there. Uh, really good vamping though. We've worked with the Yorks cast guys as well, and they're fantastic. Uh, so cheers for that, and for all your kind words. Um, but thanks for coming. Uh, today we're talking about brand collaborations. As Dan said, we've done quite a few by this point. Please admire our gnome dressed as Lara Croft there, if you're confused. <laughs> okay, so you might be wondering who's this small woman talking at me, and more importantly, what does she know about brand collaborations? I'm Jess. As Dan mentioned, I'm the Associate Marketing Manager at Future Lab. I'm also a Women in Games Ambassador and a Yuki Video Games Ambassador and also a Limit Break Mentor if you came to Anissa's talk earlier. So if you want to talk about that, then please catch up with me after this. Uh, if you do want to stay in touch, my Twitter handle's down there and if you're not on Twitter, I don't blame you. Um, but feel free to chat to me again afterwards or look me up on LinkedIn, but good luck because my name's Jess Green and uh, it's not SEO friendly. Um, I've been working on Power Wash Sim for two years today, to this day. Um, so since before the full launch, back two years ago. Um, since then we've done loads of updates. Um, some of them were our own IP and some of them were the collaborations which we'll be talking about today. So we've done Tomb Raider, Final Fantasy, Spongebob, Back to the Future and recently Warhammer 40k. Uh, here's some of the key art for some of those. So collaborations, why do them? Collaborations are great because they mix familiarity with something new. Um, they offer each respective community a chance to experience and discover their beloved worlds in a new way. For example, something I really enjoyed was when we did Final Fantasy uh, with the Midgar special pack. You could wash Seventh Heaven and you could wash off all the posters in Seventh Heaven and you just get that opportunity to experience that environment in more detail, uh, whereas you might have been rushed in and out of it uh, in the action of the other games. <clears throat> so if we talk about the nuts and bolts of how IP collaborations happen and how the process of these partnerships go uh, through all the way before hitting the public eye, um, this process seems pretty mystical to some people, both inside and outside of the industry, to be honest. Uh, and sometimes you can leverage that mystique, um, like we did with Warhammer 40k, but we will get to that later. Um, but for the purposes of sharing knowledge, let's completely uncover what the process of that is. Uh, so at Future Lab, we have a big Excel sheet. We can all contribute ideas, so everybody in the studio gets a say in who we pitch to. Um, we also asked our community who they'd like to be. Uh, washing or where they'd like to be washing even um, so ideas come from there and they all land on this big spreadsheet um, and then we have to credit our fabulous business manager Elliot Greenwood who makes all of the deals and he is amazing uh, I can't talk too much towards making the deals because he does that um, but I can talk about the rest of it especially the part with the power wash drip <laughs> so if we're able to license the IPs we want we begin to agree on the overarching details, like the rough content, um, period of availability, and stuff like that. Um, and then the exciting bit happens with asset creation and game development. Uh, it's usually anything up to a year or more before anything is announced publicly that this starts to happen. <clears throat> then all of that has to go through approval with the licensor. Um, after that, the marketing team, so my team, we can start crafting a campaign um, and then that has to go through approval with the licensor as well. All of the assets have to go through approval, so you're thinking about the key art, the trailers, the store text, event plans, influencer plans, social copy and assets all have to be produced, which is time in itself, and then approved by the licensor. And that, in our experience, is usually around 10 working days, although everybody does it differently. So you can imagine how all of that time adds up, especially when you consider that you're probably going to be working with people overseas, etc. So if you're thinking about doing collaborations, you should bear in mind that the general process will be longer um, and you should definitely build contingency periods in. And then after all that happens, the in-game content as well as the marketing plans are signed off, then the marketing can go live and then the game can go live and it's all happy days. So, 
Before all of that, if you're in the process of creating a game from the very start and you would like to leave option for IP collaborations, you should consider how well your mechanics and your style lend themselves to collaborations. Are you shoehorning yourself in where you don't want to be? Um, and you should think about how your UI is set up in a way that is conducive to com collaborations and whether they will slot nicely into menus or whether you're going to make a rod for your own back further down the line with, oh, where are we going to put that? Can we put that next to that? And things along those lines. Something that worked in our favour is, and something that we built in from early development was the fact that everything can be washed, right? So there, there is... Um, there's no limits to the amount of collaborations we can have. So we've got weird, wacky ones, and we've got fan favorite ones. Um, so our IP is quite conducive to collaborations. So you might be thinking which IPs would work for you. Uh, and to that, I'd say that only you can really say. But you should carefully consider your audience and what resonates with them. Um, you should understand your game and what synergy it has with um, other games and how well it lends itself to adaptation. So you might you might have a setting that is very pinpoint and you, and you can't really expand further than that. Or you might be a mechanics focused game a bit like we are and, uh, and that can be used in a series of settings. And you should also consider what new angle you bring. I think I spoke a bit earlier about um, washing seventh heaven and being able to see those environments in more detail that's the kind of angle that we can bring uh, we can add a, a little additional law with our messages but really it's about environmental storytelling and um, letting people really relish in in the worlds that they enjoy being in so let's talk about the most recent recent collaboration we did with warhammer and some of the lessons we learned along the way um, the first lesson would be to get it in front of the right eyes. Um, a lot of marketing people or a lot of marketing plans are built around games industry events. And I would just caution you to think first about the IP you're working with and whether they have specific days that might be better. So they might have days in law or they might have days in their communities, um, which might be better for garnering support at launch. Um, we launched, or we announced during Warhammer Skulls, which is their kind of video game showcase for everything Warhammer, and it was amazing for us. We got 22,000 likes on the um, announcement tweet, um, and we had like so many great comments that showed it was the Warhammer community that was engaged because if you're not in the Warhammer community you don't even know half the words that they're saying. Uh, so we, we could tell, you know, we've really hit the right target audience there and you can see that it went so big that people like Markiplier were picking up on it as well. So we couldn't have asked for more from that announce. It was really, really good. Um, another thing I'd say is that if you really land the announce, like like for example we did here, it could garner you further support with the IP. Uh, they might go, oh actually this is going to perform really well, we're going to support it better, we're going to allow more of our channels to post about it, we're going to put it on our blog, we're going to put it here and there, and they might have not been considering that to begin with. Um, and something else I'd say is to make use of well-known stars. If, you are, if you're bringing other IPs into yours, um, you have the benefit of bringing in the audience that comes with the IP, so you already have a built-in audience. And you can take that down further with um, bringing in stars that are um, attached to the franchises. So we did Ben Star with our um, Warhammer trailer. He did our voiceover. And they bring with them their own audience as well. So you can, you know, that Venn diagram just becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. You've got Power Wash fans, Warhammer fans, Ben Stars fans, all kind of discovering your game. Um, and I've also put there not to forget about including icons. So we've got, we with our key art that I showed earlier, we always include the most iconic um, and the most recognisable thing within that franchise for the fans. Uh, so we had Cloud's Bike with Final Fantasy. Um, and we had the time machine with Back to the Future, SpongeBob's house for SpongeBob. It's always front and center, and, and that sounds like a really obvious thing, but I think it can be 
tempting to go down the route of like, oh, let's make quite a, a deep cut uh, reference with our key art. Um, and there might be examples where that works well, but I think it works really well to sort of have front and centre the most recognisable thing, especially where you're mixing IPs. It has to be really obvious which one's which. And then finally, on the Warhammer 40,000 front, I'd say, so we use Shoot for the Warp um, because we made a deck for Warhammer early on in the marketing plans to sort of say, look, guys, here's what we want to do. Um, and some of these ideas are probably out there because if you've ever worked with IPs or you know someone that's worked with IPs, you might have been told that they're, they're quite conservative with what they sign off. Um, but I would still encourage you to sort of get in front of their eyes and say, no, we want to do this. Um, they can only say no. Um, but with Warhammer, we had really good results from that. So I went to Warhammer World in Nottingham. If anyone's ever been, it's really, really cool. Um, and I saw the big diorama. They've got a room that is a, a, a reenactment of a battle all made with figurines. Um, and I just thought it was so cool. And at Warhammer World, they have a competition called Find the Assassin, where you've got a room that's probably about half the size of this room. The whole thing is is a model diorama and you have to find a tiny figurine that looks like this. Um, and I thought, what if we did that with the uh, with the Admech from the Power Wash pack um, as sort of a live event thing? And they went for it, which we weren't expecting them to do. Um, so definitely put your ideas out there front and center, uh, but do it early. You'll, you'll shoot yourself in the foot if you come up with it late and you say off the cuff, oh, can we do this? Um, because there's just so much planning and bump that goes into things like this, as well as sign off, especially if they're risky ideas, they will take longer to sign off. I thought I'd just cap off with a list of things to ask for. If you're going to work with an IP for the first time, um, things you should be asking them for as standard are legal lines, uh, their brand guides so that you don't have to constantly question how to be using their brand with yours. You can sort of go to a guide. Some of them don't have it, some of them do, some of them have really informal versions of it, but it's best to ask. Uh, additional do's and don'ts, there might, might be kind of unspoken rules, or unwritten rules. Uh, dates, so what are blackout dates for them? Are they announcing things uh, that they can't talk about, but they can tell you which dates to avoid? Uh, you should definitely ask for that. You wouldn't want to be missing the hype for an upcoming sequel to their movie, uh, and you didn't know about it, and you could have caught on to that. Uh, music costs, this is a big one, if you want to be harnessing like iconic sounds, um, definitely speak to them about that very early on in the marketing. Those processes, those legal processes can take quite a long time. Uh, and support options, you, you might not know what support they can offer you, you might not know, you know, for example, Warhammer, the Warhammer community blog is like the biggest um, piece of communication between the Games Workshop team and the Warhammer community. Um, so you need to sort of get a list of what support that they can offer and also what kind of support you can pitch for. If it's things like blogs and stuff, you'll have to get in there early again. Um, so it's best to know all of that up front so that you can arm yourself and sort of prepare for that and pitch. Um, something I wanted to touch on quickly before I come off is just other forms of collaboration. Um, these big collaborations are quite aspirational, but other things that you can do is collaborate with your peers. So um, it's not your competition isn't always your competition. Sometimes they're your friend, and um, we've made really good use of contacts at Vampire Survivors and Deep Rock Galactic, um, and we've done some just light social banter with them. So those are really good forms of um, collaborations that you can do that can be done without paying costs or could be done, you know, scratch my back or scratch yours or it might be that there's a mutually beneficial thing happening that you can both take advantage of. And we also have like merch collaborations that we've done with VTubers that play the game, like early adopters of the game and early access, so big in the community um, and stuff like that. So it's not all, you know, it's not all right at the top out of your reach, you know, you can do, do all of that too. Um, thanks so much for listening. Sorry about the technical difficulties, and if you've got any questions, let me know. Yeah,
crossovers. First of all, like how do you just license the IP from a financial point of view? Uh, do you pay them to use it, or do, you know, do they get like cut off the revenue? Uh, and also, are they standalone, or are they like DLC that you need the base game to play? They are DLC that you need the base game to play. Uh, in terms of the contracts, I, I can't really say because it, it probably differs from contract to contract. Um, but yeah, I think there's a, there's a licensing fee involved and sometimes there's a, if it performs over that, additional things. Yeah. So presumably you see like a bump in the base game sale each time you release one of these DLCs? Yeah, and also if you can sort of harness a sale at the same time and say you're a Warhammer fan, you want to play the Warhammer DLC, but you, the, the base game is a barrier to entry for that. Well, it's on sale, so that barrier to entry is lessened slightly by that. So that would be a question for Elliot. Unfortunately, I can't really talk on that. Um, the only thing I could say really is forearmed is forewarned. So if you just get up front with things like lead times, because those are the things in marketing that could trip you up, just get all of that knowledge and, and try and ask it as early as you can so that you're as prepared as you can and you don't trip up further down the line, because those things can differ between licenses. How big is the spreadsheet? <laughs> the spreadsheet is pretty big. I mean, everyone wants something. I'd be interested to know what everybody wants here. I want Firefly. Yeah. <laughs> Sophia, who is, I think she was the first QA person to ever work on Power Wash, she asked for SpongeBob, and SpongeBob came to life. So it's a brilliant spreadsheet. And, uh, I, I would go for the Redmonds. Okay. Like, multiplying all over the place. Any, any That's suggestions in the crowd? Resident Evil? Nice, yeah, also would love that. There's a lot of um, people that are into horror and power wash simulator. It's a really... It, yeah. <laughs> Any other comment? You can go shopping with IP here. <laughs> I think we, we put out a um, bingo, bingo card to our community of like the, the IPs that they wanted the most and that was really interesting as well and got a lot of engagement. Transformers. Transformers. Nice. Cool. Cool. Well, that's it. A huge round of applause for Jess. Thank you, Jess. And uh, it's now break time. Uh, seemingly, I need a break.